Hello guys and welcome to another um, Shadows of Broomstone unboxing video. Um, this is a couple of the bits which have been made available on the Flying Frog website. Uh, I bought the Harvester and the Serpent, of Serpent Man of Jargono um, pack. Now this is the box it came in. It was relatively well packaged but uh, it's not quite like the ones you saw in the, kicks, uh, in the uh, Gen Con boxes but this is the contents. Now I've opened it up and had a look so uh, it's not quite in the order that it once was so to the uh, right you have the uh, swamp men to the left you have the guardian um, and we'll go through the guardian first because I'd say it's the smaller of the expansions and then obviously we'll go through the swamp men I've somehow got two booklets I thought for a glorious second that they'd sent me two packs but they didn't it was just two booklets and I suppose ethically I should have said something even if they had so we've got two two sets of gear here okay sorry for the, the foam board I'm trying to make a snazzy map box but it's not working brilliantly at the moment but never mind so um, we've got the Guardian first and then we've got the Swamp Men and ah. Oh, as always, I'm very excited and I think that it's awesome and so on and so forth. So let's just have a look through what, what comes in it. So first you have the sort of uh, header stuff for the enemy pack, the Guardian of Targa. Incidentally, I know there's been a lot of sort of, oh, I'm not sure about this, not having commercial packaging. If you had commercial packaging for this, just like the, um, I got the Imperial Assault blister boxes today and they've already gone in the bin. So if it saves them some money, what's the big deal? Um, this is, is, is thin paper, okay? The cards are 100% card stock. So if you're thinking of buying the exclusive, uh, not the exclusive, the, uh, the like early bird stuff, you are perhaps getting this and you can see this is not going to be the quality that the actual one is. But they do, they're fine. So Guardian of Targa talks you through how it works. It talks you through the threat cards. There's a new concept that the threat cards will have sort of uh, worlds on them, so you could choose to draw an epic threat of that world, which is quite nice. Uh, it talks through the damage guardian, and then it talks through the two guardians. Again, a lot of people were complaining about this. Blah, 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 two guardians, I have to go to buy it twice. Da, 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 da. Um, but like it says, if you only have a single model, just get a free elite. So it's a, an elite guardian. Job done. Um, quite a detailed um, kit. I haven't tried to make it, but it, um, the, you can see that they've got ball joints on the arms. So you can actually sort of angle the arms. Um, but it's much better than what you had with the base game. They've learnt from it from a uh, they're telling you how to do it perspective. So the Guardian itself, cool looking little mini. I'm not sure whether to paint him sort of stony or metallic. It's a uh, hard call. Initiative 2, extra large size, Terra 2, so very similar to all of your other ones. Uh, he has a burning laser, so a, a quake smash. Um, and then critical hits only reduce defense to 40 health, 4 combat dice, hitting on a 4 plus for 4 damage. Uh, and then loads of cool um, things, okay. It's quite cool. Control systems. The enemy changes target each turn, but is minus one combat for each ten wounds on it. So slowly it weakens down. Then you have the br uh, the brutal um, blue laser quake smash hard and shell one eight control systems, and then you've got some multi lasers, dark stone explosions, self repair, plasma gauntlet. Oh no, it's all cool. Very slow, very healthy, um, and that's that. The modeling kit itself I haven't had a huge look at. I mean I never thought that this one was ever going to be super detailed because it's just the nature of the beast. Oh sorry for knocking that. So if I can try and sort of focus there. Nice like eye work, a little bit of ornate stuff. You've got these sort of power cables as usual. Very easy to put together in my opinion. Look at these chunky sort of slots to put it in. You can't argue with that, okay. It's all hollow, so it's nice and light. You've got the ball joints on the arms, so you can customise them to a degree as well. I'm looking forward to putting it together. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Then you have the cards. 
so you get a few cards absolutely the same quality as all of your other other cards so three epics and two other world threats the other world threats are damage guardians okay so they start with 25 15 or 5 wounds uh, damage guardian the epic threat um, what, and you see it's got this target plateau so you can ping through the epic threats till you find a relevant one um, one guardian one threat one guardian one threat or two guardians obviously you can't do that but that's not the end of the world so a nice little pack I think quite interesting I think quite cool certainly adding a bit more flavor I love the um, uh, the City of the Ancients which is why I tried to prioritize the uh, the purchase of that over the other things but boy howdy am I glad I bought the Serpentman because I figured well I've got another um, uh, City of the Ancients model I know I'm going to be sad that I don't have another Swamps model ah oh, these are really good guys so you start with a little booklet Okay, so you've got new enemies, Serpentman Warriors and Serpentman Shamans. And again, I'm just sort of pausing long enough for you to see. New cards. Now let's come back to those. But look, you've got Serpentman Tribe, Serpentman uh, Magic and Serpentman Juju Trinkets, which is cool. Some epic threats, one of which is a Grand Shaman. So uh, that's pretty mental as well. Um, and then you've got the Serpentment Tribes. So they give different types of wounds. Um, and then there's some rules. So magic. So the Serpentment Shaman's casting magic. You draw the top card to see what's been cast. They have this thing called Mastery. And that's used for the uh, Grand Master Shaman. But there's also some special um, items that they can have that can let you do it. The Serpentman, the Serpentman start, the Shaman start with a tribal artifact, and I'll show you some of those. And when you do a critical hit, you can knock it out of their hands. The Grand Shaman is uh, super duper. Look at the art, the art. I was um, having a pop for my Cinder thing. I was like, oh, I'm not sure about the art. It seems to be perhaps a little bit rushed or maybe a little corner cut. This is fantastic. Um, poison markers, they talk about that. You have six tribes, so you have the Yellowtail, they're the most dominant, the Bloodbane, the Ghost Snake, the King Moccasin, the Diamond Scale, and the Striking Shadow Tribe. I know it does mean that if you really wanted to, you'd have to buy six sets of Serpentman, but if you don't want to, you don't, and for those who do, oh, how cool to have six different colours, you can guess probably what I'm going to do. Hex hits um, are this new technique, so when you're doing spells, you're going to hit it and you're going to use defense, um, your willpower to defend, so it means that your priest and stuff is going to be more cool. And then you've got these uh, missions, Human Sacrifice. Haven't really read these. Search mines, find a gate, and then find the serpent and that's going to do the sacrifice. Sounds pretty cool. So that's that. So one mission, and then Warring Tribes. And you start on the uh, Serpentman entrance toast and you can go through that um, and some cool stuff there. It even has a little mini fact. You cannot argue that these things are not well play tested. Okay, no proper painting guide um, for this one beyond that sort of thing. But then I wasn't a huge fan of the Lava Man painting guide anyway. Very simple to model. So the Serpent Man Shaman, it's a two part model with a head on. And for the other one, it's just a two, sorry, three part model. And this one is a three part model. So you stick the thingy on and you stick the shield on. And they've got two different sculpts as well. Really, really lovely. The models for these are exceptional. It's a shame I can't paint one up for you. I'm just excited to show you now. So you can see, Look at the detail. You, I mean, again, it's not amazing, but it's really good. Um, it's way better than what it was. You've got the nice dark stone clubs. You've got a nice bit of wood finish. You've got some cool sort of artifact things, little bags. I, I think this is as good as many, if not all minis. And yes, there is a little bit of thing. You clip that, you clip that, you stick them together, and then you stick that on there. They have listened and made these easier. It is a uh, falsehood to say otherwise. So, the Serpent Warriors, quite fast, uh, Initiative 5. They'll change depending on the tribe you've pulled. They can move through other models. They've got double damage on a 6, and their defense is doubled if they're adjacent to a, their um, attacker. So, again, more tactics in terms of placement and stuff. Melee, Combat 2, Damage 3, pretty basic. Pack Hunters, Tribal Veterans, Gut Training, Savage, and Poison Weapons. So, really, really nice. 
um, for the brutal version they jump up to six um, same sort of stuff haven't really looked at it slightly bigger health slightly easier to hit you know standard sort of brutaliness there the serpent shaman oh or shaman I don't know how you pronounce it so he runs away you can get away free move so he will not be adjacent to you so he's going to cast magic start of activation while not adjacent roll a d6 target a random hero uh, and attack or then on three to six cast a magic spell instead of um it starts with the juju trinket and you can knock that out slither and dark stone weapons uh 18 health these don't mess about these guys okay and then you've got more trinkets and so on and so forth more magic uh, the brutal one, eight initiative. So that one's seven initiative. This is eight initiative. You're never going faster than him. Same sort of stuff, but he gets two trinkets, 24 health. Um, oh, he's really powerful. I would not like to run into him at all. So what the hell are all these things that we were talking about? This came as a surprise to me. Now, we all know that he... Um, the Flying Frog guys really like cards. This is how many cards you get with the Serpentment expansion. That is not an insignificant amount of cards. So you've got a whole deck of magic spells. And I would imagine they will expand on that uh, when we hit the, uh, uh, the Tribesmen. You've got a whole deck of trinkets. I mean, there are only six cards in a deck or something, but they did not need to do this. You've got a whole deck of tribes. You've got some new artifacts. Okay, this came as a huge shock to me. You don't even have a small number. You've got five new artifacts. You've got new encounters. So it's making it more interesting from an encounter perspective. Okay. And then you have an absolute ton of other world threat cards. Five other world threat cards. And uh, the rules on poison again. The new rules on hex hits. No one ever uses these, but whatever. The rules on serpent magic. The rules on the grand shaman. Then you've got some low threats, some medium threats, some epic high threats, and even the epic threat, the epic Grand Showman. And you can see again, he's a Swamps of Jargono one, so if you wanted to pull out, then you'd find the Swamp Raptor or, or this guy, or so on and so forth. So let's go through the threat deck first, because it's nice and easy. So you've got your epic one, so one Grand Shaman, and um, a threat card, or six warriors, or a Paradise of Warriors, and a threat card. Six Serpentman. Uh, six Serpentman and a shame, uh, Paradise of Serpentman and a Shaman, uh, Paradise of Serpentman, uh, Shaman and D3 Serpentman, D3 Serpentman, or one Shaman. So they're all the basic stuff. These ones are obviously just Serpentman, 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 Serpentman. They're all the same. It just means you're much more likely to find them in the in the swamps. D3, Peril, and six. So that's that. So how do the tribes differ? You're only ever going to have one out at a time. Okay, so you don't need multiples. You, you will never see a world where you're going to have two tribes fighting in the same turn. The yellow tail, you've got nice sort of uh, flavour text there. No bonus. So they're the most common ones. Okay, there's one, two, three, three cards for the yellow tails. So if you're going to paint them one colour, paint them the yellow tail ones. The ghost snakes that are unkillable, fear, endurance and regeneration. The moccasins, heavy scales, brute force, so the strong ones. The bloodbane tribe, uh, vicious attacks and deadly poison. The diamond scales, fierce warriors with formation, so immune to criticals because they're in formation. The striking shadows, stealth strike and fast. And then you're back to the yellow tails. What an amazing way of adding flavour. This has made the... I always saw the, the swamps as a bit of a runner-up. Um, and now they're just absolutely stonking. Juju trinkets, the way you can buff your shamans. All of the spells are now at mastery level. If he uh, is already a master, then he gets two cast two spells. The hex bag, all combat hits are hex hits, and they need to use willpower instead of um, defence. The Venetia Rattle, Terror 2 Plus, automatic two horror hits. Really nasty. The Tribal Tattoos, um, immune to critical hits. 
Um, and then the tribal voodoo doll at the start of each turn reduced by it to defense and willpower 5 plus so what a lovely way of adding a really interesting element to the monsters their spells this is taking a while but whatever I'm excited savage assault plus so a buff to all of the other serpent men plus 2 plus 3 rapid regeneration they all heal and they can recover juju trinkets they heal more maelstrom 5 plus agility test, if failed they're swept up in the swarm taking d6 wounds, they then bounce 3 times, which might be bad for you because you might end up, so again another thing messing up movement and stuff, puppet master, they can attack with your own hero, that's just mental, <laughs> um, hex trap, um, so every hero, um, every hit a hero does to a serpent man causes a hit on themselves, 2 wounds each, uh, and now they do three wounds if they're a master. Hex Bolt. Um, they have to take Hex equal to their luck. So luck is now bad. Um, another Hex Bolt. And then Ghost Bite. A random hero uh, Astral Serpent 2d6 wounds. So this guy does not mess about. Okay, He's got debuffs for you. He's got buffs for his enemies. And so on and so forth. The Encounter Deck. You just, they're not particularly, you could have had these in the main game, but they are just, most of them are relating to the swamps, uh, the swamp men. Tribal border, change to serpent tribes. Next time you find a tribe, they're going to be a different thing because you've gone past their border. Um, another tribal border. Poison darts, so like the snakeman temple attacks you and you get some poison. Uh, voodoo curse. Um, I haven't really read it, but you can read it if you wanted to pause it. Okay, uh, we're being watched. You get an ambushed attack um, if you are failing. So, just extra flavour, extra variety. It's never a bad thing. Okay, they're just going to get shuffled straight into my encounter deck for the Jargo notes. Um, with the uh, stuff, you've got two identical and three new. Okay, they always double up on some of them. So, discard to cancel a growing dread card on a roll of 4+, plus or re-roll Hold Back the Darkness. That's not bad. I mean, not, not the most exciting. It's no City of the Ancients, to be honest, but still not bad. Anytime you kill an enemy, place a marker on once per turn. You can discard any number of markers to add plus one damage to one of your hits. So you can wipe out a load of the weak sort of things and then that's uh, pumping you up for the next one. It does require a hand to use. That makes me question whether it would be that useful, but whatever. Halfbone Necklace, just... Free Spirit Armor plus Tribal, really not bad. And then Tuari Feather, one agility, and then you can move through models and automatically pass escape tests. Again, nothing amazing, but in the same breath, they didn't need to do this. So, I don't know, I'm super happy with the Swamps. I'm very excited for the Guardian, because he was the one I wanted. This was just to sort of balance out, because I thought, oh, if I've got a City of the Ancients one, I should probably get a Swamps one. Blown away by the content of it. I'm going to be putting the models together tomorrow and I'll be painting them sort of probably tomorrow. <laughs> um, and just fantastic. They've knocked it out of the park, in my opinion. You don't need the packaging. Um, if this is the. If this is what um, is, is due to come, <laughs> storage is going to be an absolute nightmare. But we are in for a real treat. So, on that note, I'm off.